price. Get the Auto Trader app today. Worked to death. We've all heard that expression. And it turns out there might be something to it. New study out says that many of us are actually having problems logging out while working from home, and it's having a major impact on our health. Mackenzie Irwin is an employment lawyer with Zamfiro Tamarkin and joins us now for more on all this here on Global News Radio 640 Toronto. Mackenzie, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Jeff. Thanks so much for having me. Appreciate you joining us. Are you hearing this uh, more and more there at the uh, law firm and from clients and from people that they're having problems turning off the computer or logging off while working from home? Oh, oh, certainly. Yeah. I mean, it's it's undeniable. The pandemic has made unplugging uh, a real challenge for most workers in Canada. I think, you know, with the increased technology and these ongoing lockdowns, um, and in addition to the loss of uh, in-person office time, employers in Ontario are, are really increasing their demands on their employees and making it uh, really difficult to establish that clear boundary between work time and personal time when working from home. And is that uh, as tough uh, for the employee as it is the employer? Because I think a lot of employees and what the survey is suggesting are saying is that they're not walking away from their computer or logging off because of a sense of obligation to the company and to their employer. Yeah, I mean, I think it's pretty difficult for both employers and employees. Um, employers are, are, you know, they have the challenge of kind of um, managing their workforce remotely and, and um, getting a sense. It's hard when their people aren't coming into the office to really get a true sense of of when people are, are um, online and when they're not and when they're logging out. Um, and in terms of with, with the employees, uh, of course, there's that guilt of, um, you know, we're sitting around in, in, in our stay at home order and, and we're not really sure what we, we feel guilty when we're not, when we're not doing something productive. Uh, so why not work? I, I think that's a very common um, feeling amongst employees these days. So there has been a talk that because maybe work from home, for some of us anyways, is here to stay, here for the long term, that maybe we need a clearer definition, maybe even a legal definition to protect our workers and protect uh, people so they don't have this sense of guilt or obligation? Yeah, I think there is a real need. So, you know, as it stands, unfortunately, the law really doesn't provide for a way for employees to really force their employers to give them that right to unplug as as we kind of have have dubbed it these days um but so yeah there's certainly a void here where um there's no clear obligation for an employer to to do anything about this um that being said i mean it's really you know there's nothing just because it's not been legislated or there's no legal basis for it there's nothing um really stopping employers from taking the reins on this one and really establishing some sort of disconnect policy to promote, you know, mental health among among its workforce, and to really, um, you know, there's a there's also a, a an added benefit for employers because it, it can help um, in terms of minimizing their liability for any any overtime pay or overtime pay claims that might be coming down the pipeline. So do you think or do you believe that maybe we need something, some sort of addition to the labor code to cover work from home moving forward? Because, you know, I think maybe a lot of people might say, well, the solution's easy. It's just the workday ends at 4.30 or ends at 5 o'clock. Shut your laptop and that's it. But this has been something, a problem that has really been years, decades in the making because maybe work from home is just sort of exposed it a little more. But we've all been so connected to our uh, devices, particularly our uh, smartphones, and that the, the office is pretty much in our pocket, it seems, 24-7. Yeah, certainly. I mean, whether or not this is a, um, an opportunity for, for, you know, the government or for, it to, for, for this issue to be legislated, um, you know, that we can look to countries like, um, I'm thinking off the top of my head, you know, France, for example, that has very, you know, strict uh, labor laws about, Um, how many hours a week people are working, um, vacation entitlements in a year. Um, But it's really, it's it's a cultural shift that we need to see where we're placing more value on on that free time and that that down and that leisure time as opposed to the value that we place, unfortunately, here in North America that we place on always being connected and, and available to your employer. Um, so is it a time for, for legislation? That would certainly help. 
Um, but uh, I guess that we've been we've been uh, grappling with this issue for a long time now, and uh, it might be time to for the government to step in and legislate it. Right, because this affects a lot of people, a lot of workers. As a matter of fact, uh, by April. They estimate that 5.1 million of us, 5.1 million Canadians ha- are now or currently uh, working from home. And as I mentioned off the top, there's the World Health Organization out yesterday with this a study that says that these uh, long hours and working from home and the sense of obligation where you can't disconnect has actually found that 745,000 people died from stroke and heart disease associated with working uh, long hours. So this affects a lot of people and has some pretty serious, uh, possible serious health implications. Yeah, I mean, those those statistics are quite shocking, of course. Um, but I mean, in terms of what employees can do to kind of manage this, because it's, I mean, this is certainly in, uh, we're, we're in this for the long haul. It's already been about 14 months for many of us. But, um, but yeah, in terms of what an employee can do to kind of manage, um, manage that, that expectation, um, uh, if, if you find yourself that you're working these excessive hours during these lockdowns, it's really important that, uh, well, first of all, that you keep a detailed record of the hours that you're working every day, because, uh, depending on your position, you may actually be entitled to overtime pay for those hours worked. Um, above and beyond that, it's really important that you kind of um, that employees start reaching out to their employers and and establishing this um, a, a dialogue about what what they're feeling and having a discussion about how how these long out how many hours you're working. First of all, it may be the case that your employer just simply doesn't know that you're working these excessive hours. Um, but having this discussion with your employer about um, how you're feeling, how many hours you're working, um, and expressing your concerns with your employer in writing. Um, I know a lot of people are are actually suffering from negative health um, impacts of these extensive hours. Um, And if that's the case, you know, it's very important that you're seeking, um, you're seeing your doctor to kind of obtain perhaps obtain a doctor's note for the effects that these uh, extensive hours are having on you um, because that doctor's note can be a very powerful tool um, that employees can use um, to arm themselves when they're being overworked and kind of taking that stance um, to, to kind of correct and maybe minimize um, or establish some sort of uh, more reasonable work, uh, work expectations. Yeah, just finally, Mackenzie, what has your experience uh, told you about having that open dialogue with employers? Because I think some employees might feel tentative. They might not want to do that, fearing that uh, maybe they don't look committed to the organization or as committed as some of their uh, co-workers. But listen, you're well protected as an employee, right, in this uh, country. And there's nothing wrong with having that good open dialogue with your employer and just saying this is really uh, impacting me and impacting my uh, health. Yeah, I mean, I think that that, that dialogue is very key um, in terms of, of um, making sure that you're you're protected when you're making these um, when you're having these discussions. It's really important that these uh, that these concerns are expressed in writing. Um, and I think in terms of so, I mean, the Employment Standards Act does protect you in terms of um, if you're if you're if you are working those excessive hours. Um, and you're you're simply reaching out to kind of you know you're seeking a compensation for the overtime pay that you might be um, that you might be owed. Um, there are protections in place that um, from the Employment Standards Act that protect uh, you against any form of reprisal um, that your employer might engage in in response to you asserting your rights under the Employment Standards Act. All right, some good information, Mackenzie. I really appreciate the time with us this afternoon. Thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. All right. Mackenzie Irwin is an employment lawyer with Zanfiro Tamarkin. A gunman on.